Okay, so for top secret, we're going to show three videos. See you on the other side, and then um, we'll do a couple questions and then get out of here. All right, lady, what is this? Well, usually I'm showing off a tester that has pogo pins, but uh, in this case, I'm going to show how I'm building a tester for this revision of the TFT Touch Shield, which has a micro SD card. I want to test that as a display and as a touch driver, so I have to test all that stuff too and all these connectors. So in this case, I'm actually going to use a Metro RP2040. Um, we just put these in the shop and uh, they're very low cost and um, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the UF2 bootloaders built in. So they're a lot more reliable. Um, and in this case, it's got a little code that's looking for an SD card. And when I insert the SD card, it looks for an image called Woof. And then uh, I can test the touch screen. And so this is a great way for me to uh, give the test prep folks at Adafruit uh, a quick way to test all the functionality for this shield so we can get into the shop very quickly. So this just needs to get taped down. And you can see the tape on the back. Put it on there. Bam! New product. Early data, what is this? I'm testing out some displays that I found in some bins. I ordered these a long time ago. These are 3.5 inch capacitive touch displays. So I made a breakout board uh, with an iSpy connector. And you see I made a little mistake, but I fixed it. With some blue wire hacks. And then I've got it wired up here to an iSpy BFF on a Cutie Pie and uh, just testing out the capacitive touch display. Something interesting about this display is actually it's multi-touch capable. So I can put three fingers down and you can see it detects the three touches and draws them with different colors. Kind of neat. Uh, it actually has like five multi-touch so you can see it's got four or five fingers all can touch at the same time. This chip doesn't actually support gestures. You'd have to do that on the microcontroller. Um, it's an unfortunate side effect, but it otherwise works pretty nicely. So I'm going to wrap up, fix that little mistake, and then we'll get these nice 480 by 320 displays into the shop. All right, lady, what was this? This is me testing out a 2.1 inch capacitive touch IPS display that uses RGB TTL. It's a 18 bit color display. Uh, 480 by 480, so it's actually like a high resolution display, which means it doesn't use SPI, it uses parallel RGB. And usually that's really hard to do on a microcontroller, but the ESP32 S3 can do it, ESP32, if it's got enough PS RAM. And then this board, this is actually an eval board called the LCD EV. And this originally came with a square display, but um, one fun fact is almost all these 40 pin displays are the same pinout. So, I had to update the init code and the capacitive touch driver is a little bit different too, but uh, I got it working and uh, we got an Arduino library and then CircuitPython is coming up next. So this is looking great, getting those cool displays working one at a time. Okay, live from the Acer sector. Okay, so that's the eyeball. Eyeball. And we're working on this and then this was the intro. So, um, anything to add before we uh, want to show? Just real fast, hold it up. No, I mean, I can just show it on the overhead. I think, you know, the, the, real. the video um, was pretty good. So, this is a four-inch display. I'm going to also get a version of this that has capacitive touch. This one does not have touch, so you can poke yourself in the eyeball all you want. But, I mean, like, it's so like it's so cool and weird. Um, great for Halloween. Maybe we'll have it just in time. So, you know, we have, there's an Arduino library that can support these. Um, and I just have to program in the init code. And then Jepler has been working on CircuitPython support. You do need to have something like this um, Metro ESP32 S3, which has eight megabytes of PS RAM, because these displays, unlike the 3.5 or 2.8 or 1.2 inch displays, the small ones, those have built in memory. This does not. You have to draw the screen constantly. So while it looks like nothing is happening, actually a lot is happening. It's constantly redrawing, like every second. Uh, sorry, every point, every 50 hertz, whatever, 60 hertz, it's redrawing the display, which means that you get very fast redraws, but you have to have the memory for the display buffered inside of here and it's constantly like outputting it. So the only thing I don't know is if it's doing this kind of display output, you know, is that happening on one core and you can do Wi-Fi on the other core and how does this work with the octal ps ram because like can you do stuff during the the you know v-sync or does it buffer i don't actually understand how it works um but uh, i'll definitely be learning more about it as we're pushing the limits because it would be cool to make like a round pie portal like literally it's a portal and you can like show stuff from the internet but it's round cool. um so yeah i wanted you know we asked you like which ones should i do and you said do the round ones 
So I did the uh, I did the round ones. Yes, yeah, nothing illustrates what we're up to other than giant eyeballs. Okay, that's that's uh, what we're up to. Sweet. Beep.